Hey, it's Kyle here, and today I'll be reviewing episode 7 of the Book of Boba Fett, which is the uh, finale. This review will have some spoilers in it, so if you haven't watched episode 7 yet, in the name of honor, uh, be sure to uh, watch the episode before you watch this video, because again, there will be spoilers, so that is your last warning in that regard. So overall, really enjoyed this episode. Uh, wow, <laughs> was it action-packed. I think everybody was expecting that since uh, the war that everybody was kind of expecting had been building up the entire season since we just really only got the like the initial act of it at the end of episode six. I think everybody knew like, oh, episode seven is just going to be non-stop action. And, and boy was it, uh, there's some stuff that I expected, some stuff that I didn't expect. Uh, I'll say at one point in the episode there was something that I should have expected that I completely forgot about and it <laughs> blew me away when it happened. Uh, but overall, like I said, I really enjoyed the episode. Um, so that being said, I'll kind of touch on some of my uh, favorite moments uh, throughout the episode. First off, it was nice to be back with Boba Fett again. You know, uh, the last couple of episodes, uh, episode five, no Boba Fett, episode six, hardly any Boba Fett. So it was nice to kind of touch base with uh, Boba again and Finnick and kind of get back in that world. Um, love the interactions in this episode with uh, Boba and his entire crew that he's built up um, from more recent editions like The Mandalorian, but Finnick, uh, Black Chrysanthemum, um, the, uh, the mod gang, uh, the... Uh, the citizens of Freetown that joined this episode, uh, his little army that he's built uh, throughout the series, I uh, really enjoyed uh, that part of it. Everything felt in place. No, to me, no group felt like, oh, I'm not sure about that, I'm not sure about the chemistry there. I really like the army they've built. Uh, the Pikes uh, were awesome villains for uh, this uh, episode, uh, from the Pike foot soldiers. To the uh, to the battle droids uh, they brought out, which I was not expecting when that happened. That was amazing. That uh, the battle scene between those droids and the forces of Boba Fett were amazing. Uh, that was awesome. And of course, you know they have Cad Bane, which is uh, you know their ace card. So that was really cool. And then you also get the other kind of criminal families. Um, all betrayed Boba Fett. So all the forces of evil are portrayed on one side and all the people that have Boba's kind of built a loyalty with through uh, this uh, season were on his side. I guess the only group that wasn't involved, that was heavily involved in the beginning series, was the Tuscans. You know, I kept on kind of hoping that maybe he'd be able to bring in some, you know, maybe a, a tribe that was aligned with a group that he was with and stuff. But I guess, you know, we're just led to believe that the tribe he was was completely wiped out and he has no context left with the Tuscans, but it would have been kind of cool if the Tuscans had got brought in. I kind of thought with the Mandalorian, maybe when he was going to Freetown, he'd also try to bring in the tribe he'd worked with to take down the Great Dragon, but I guess that, that wasn't in the cards. You know, maybe in the future we'll see more of the Tuscans. Uh, but the action scenes were amazing, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, the part that I alluded to earlier that I should have known was coming that I completely forgot about was the Boba and the Rancor. When Boba went away and um, was when the droid showed up, my first, my first initial thought was he is going to get um, his ship and come back with those more powerful weapons on the ship and uh, destroy the battle droids. That way I completely forgot about the Rancor for some reason. I don't know why because everybody after the last episode said, oh, they alluded to Boba Rod and the Rancor. We've got to see Boba Rod and the Rancor. But in the heat of the episode, it just completely set my mind. I think mainly because I was thinking back to the uh, the Clone Wars animated series where a lot of times the big droids um, were kind of destroyed with uh, the ships and stuff. So I was kind of like, oh, they just need aerial support. Go get your ship. Come back and destroy the battle droids. And completely, <laughs> completely forgot about the Rancor. But the Rancor battle droid uh, scene uh, probably instantly becomes one of my favorite action slash fight scenes in Star Wars history. It was amazing. Um, wow. It was, uh, I don't, <laughs> I have a hard time putting in words 
how awesome that series uh, of events was. Uh, really enjoyed it. Uh, and then I thought it was really cool that, you know, you have this epic battle scene between the Rancor and the battle droids. They finally def defeat the battle droids. And then um, Cad Bane shows up and is able to scare off the Rancor like it's nothing, which kind of really drives home again how of elite bounty hunter slash fighter that he truly is, that uh, the Rancor was nothing to him. It didn't phase him, and he knew how to scare it away instantly. Uh, the fight scene between uh, Boba and Cad uh, was really cool. Um, I thought it was going to go on a little bit longer. I thought we were going to get a little bit more hand-to-hand -hand combat, uh, but it was still really awesome. The dialogue between the two was amazing driving home their entire history together. Uh, the fact that, you know, uh, he has served as kind of a mentor to Boba. Um, and then how it ends. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, I was expecting uh, Cad to maybe uh, cut his losses and hit the road. Uh, but I guess at least towards the end of his life, we've seen the last of Cad. Now, uh, one thing I thought after this instantly hit, I was like, oh, I guess we won't see Cat anymore. I was like, oh, nope, the Bad Batches are still going on. And we've seen him in that, and I guess other stuff maybe set before the Mandalorian and Boba Fett. We could still see a younger version of Cad Bane pop up. But I guess old man Cad Bane is, is no more. Uh, kind of related to that, uh, one thing I was expecting throughout the episode that never happened, I was kind of expecting Cobb Vant to pop up and be a part of the fight scene. Even though the, the citizens of Freetown alluded to that he had been gunned down dead, I was like, well, he's not dead. It's one of those things, if, if he was going to die, he would have died on scene, uh, on screen, I should say, not um, shot and like him being treated and then he you know, dies elsewhere. That's just not how <laughs> movies and TV shows work. So I kept on expecting him to show up in the battle and kind of provide uh, a critical moment. But obviously, if you watch the end credit scenes, we see Cat, uh, sorry, Cobb um, in the back to tank. Um, apparently, with the mod doctor getting ready to get some modifications made to him, so I guess we'll see a new uh, kind of a cyborg version of Cobb Vant in um, the future. Uh, obviously, you get uh, probably the big moment that a lot of people will be talking about is uh, Grogu showing up, and clearly he chose the Mandalorian. Um, R2-D2 brings him back. He's wearing his little shirt. He obviously plays a critical role in um, the battle scene. And sorry, one of my Star Wars things just fell over. Don't know why. <laughs> oh, it's R2, right? When I mentioned R2, R2 fell over. Um, I guess I have some Spar Star Wars ghosts here. Or either Grogu moved that with the Force. Um, but the Grogu stuff was really cool. How he played a role in the battle, which clearly during his time with Luke, how he grew in the Force. Um, we saw him use powers to an extent that we've never seen him use before. He's still clearly, sorry, R2 fell over again. I guess he doesn't want to stand up. Uh, he's clearly grown in the Force, but he still obviously has a way to go because you see after he uses uh, the Force with the Rancor to calm him down, he instantly has to take a nap again. So still not quite full. Uh, Yoda Jedi powers yet, uh, but definitely more powerful than we've seen him before. So I'm guessing we'll see a lot of uh, Force uh, powers with Grogu in the future of the Mandalorian. And now I'm kind of wondering, is Grogu going to be the one that kind of helps the Mandalorian um, learn how to use his saber? Because uh, he's obviously still struggling with that, so that could be a really cool thing. Maybe Grogu is going to give the Mandalorian some training montages in Season 3 of the Mandalorian. Who knows? Uh, of course, the show wraps up uh, with uh, Boba now fully controlled, the citizens uh, showing him his thanks for kind of bringing peace in um, an era of, I guess, more legitimate rule to uh, Tatooine versus uh, what they've been used to and what they would have faced under the Pikes. Um, I'm assuming we'll see Boba and a lot of his crew that he's built up and the other Star Wars stuff going on, especially the Mandalorian. I can see when the Mandalorian needs help that he maybe calls on Boba to return a favor for him staying with him for his last stand. Um, I don't know if we'll get enough, any more stories that focus so much on Boba and Tatooine, but who knows? Maybe we will. I'm not sure. I'm still in my mind trying to decide if I want to see that or not. Uh, probably in a few days, I will be posting a video kind of giving my overall thoughts on the Book of Boba Fett. I want more time to kind of think about it and how the entire series um, stacks up now that we've seen all the episodes. I might go back and rewatch it before I do that video. But overall, like I said, 
Episode 7 was awesome. I thought it was a great conclusion to the series. No major complaints on my end for how this episode went. Um, let me know in the comment section below. What did you think of Episode 7? Did you um, have some things that you'd wish they would address in the, the season finale that they just didn't? I would be very interested to see your thoughts. What were your overall thoughts on the series in general? Um, look forward to seeing your comments. Um, if you enjoyed this video, uh, hit that like button. Uh, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. I really appreciate the support. Um, I guess I need to conclude this video so I can get R2-D2 back up on my Star Wars collectible shelf. So the next time I film, you will see R2 back there again like he's supposed to be. Anyway, again, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time, and may the force be with you.